أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تنكحوا المشركات حتى يؤمن ولامة مؤمنة خير من مشركة ولو أعجبتكم ولا تنكحوا المشركين حتى يؤمنوا ولعبد مؤمن خير من مشرك ولو أعجبكم أولئك يدعون إلى النار والله يدعو إلى الجنة والمغفرة بإذنه ويبين آياته للناس لعلهم يتذكرون صدق الله العظيم From here now for four continuous sections questions and problems regarding women are being discussed The first instruction regarding this لا تنكح المشركات حتى يؤمن Don't marry مشرك women idolaters those non-believers who are not from even the people of the book they will all be included in it Don't marry مشرك women حتى يؤمن till such time that they embrace Islam they come to believe while amatun mu'minatun and definitely even a slave girl if she is a mu'min if she is a muslim khairum min mushrikatin is better than a mushrik free woman wala ajabatkum although she might appear to you to be much liked you might you may be liking her more ولا تنكحوا المشركين حتى يؤمنوا and don't give away your women in marriage to any mushrik man till such time that he embraces islam he becomes a believer wal abdu mu'minun khairum min mushrikin surely a slave if he is a muslim if he is a mu'min is better than a free man if he is a mushrik a kafir wala ajabak ajabakum although he may appear to you to be very good ulaiq yad'una ila an-nar they are calling towards fire towards hell mushrik women mushrik men they will be calling you they will be driving you towards hell wallahu yad'u ila al-jannah and allah is calling you towards paradise towards heaven wal maghfirat bi iznihi and forgiveness his forgiveness with his permission wa yubayyinu ayatihi lil nas la'allahum yatadhakkarun and he is making his commandments his ayat his signs very plain very clear so that people have people get reminded they have the admonition instruction number 2 wa yasalunak anil mahis and they asking you about the menstruation qul huwa azan tell them it's a discomfort fa tadilul nisa fil mahis so keep aloof from the women during their periods wala taqrabuhunna hatta yathum and now don't go near them till they are clean fa idha tatahharna when they are fully finally clean fatuhunna min hayth amarakum Allah then you can go to them in the manner in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you inna Allah yuhibbu at-tawwabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahhirin verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who repent of their mistakes 
and he loves those who keep themselves clean and pure. Nisaukum harsul lakum. Your women are like a tillage for you. Fatu harsakum and nashetum. You can come to your tillage from wherever you like. Wakadimuli and fosikum. And forward good deeds for your own selves. This can have two meanings. Because due to this sexual intercourse with women, with wives, one gets offsprings. So his progeny is continued. So get for you yourself, try to preserve your species through this act that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for you. But taqullah and have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regard him as he should have be regarded. And keep it in mind every moment that you will have to meet him. You will be presented before him one day. And O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give the glad tidings to the people who really believe. And don't use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your oaths as an impediment to your being pious and God-fearing and to your promoting peace among mankind. You take oath on Allah's name, Allah, and on what? I will not do, do this good deed again. For the acts of charity, for acts of piety, for acts of making peace among people, you know, somebody, somebody sometimes gets angry. I am not going to again indulge in your affairs at all. Although he was trying to make peace between two brothers. Wallahi! I swear by God, I will not again indulge in your affairs. Why? You have to go on trying to make peace between the two quarreling brothers. So don't use the name of Allah for such oaths. لا يواخذكم الله باللغو في يمانكم Allah will not take you to task about your oaths which you take without any intentions. ولكن يواخذكم بما كسبت قلوبكم But He will bring you to task for those oaths which were earned by your hearts with intentions. والله غفور الحليم and Allah is forgiving and forbearing. In this connection, the final orders will come in Surah Al-Ma'idah, that if somebody has taken an oath, and now he wants to go contravene it, then he has to give the redemption, the kafara, the fidya, that will be described in Surah Al-Ma'idah. As I told you, the blueprint of the Sharia is being prepared in this Surah, but in most of the matters, the final injunctions of the Sharia that will appear in Surah Al-Ma'idah. لِلَّذِينَ يُولُونَ مِن نِسَائِهِمْ تَرَبُّسُ أَرْبَعَةِ أَشْوَرِ Those of you who swear and take an oath of not having any intercourse with their wives may wait for four months. Somebody has taken an oath. I am not going to go near you, he says to his wife. And he takes the oath, swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this condition may continue for more, four months, not more. After four months, one has to take a decision. Either divorce her and make her way free, or who should return and he should start having the sexual intercourse with the wife. So only for four months it can be. This separation can be only for four months, not any more. لِلَّذِينَ يُولُونَ مِن نِسَائِهِمْ تَرَبُّسُ أَرْبَعَةِ أَشْهُرَ فَإِنْ فَاوُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ If they go back, if they break their oath, it's better. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also forgiving and merciful. وَإِنْ عَزَمُ الطَّلَاقِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيُّ الْعَلِيمٌ And if they have decided for divorce, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, all knowing. Now, the question of talaq is being discussed in a very lengthy form. وَالْمُطَلَقَّاتُ يَتْرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسَهِنَّ سَلَاسَةَ قُرُوبِ And those women who have been divorced should withhold themselves 
for three periods of menstruation. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُنَّ أَنْ يَكْتُمْنَ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ فِي And it is not halal for them. It is not permissible for them that they should hide what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in their wombs. If there is some pregnancy, they must disclose at the time of divorce so that it is known that this son or daughter belongs to her husband who has divorced her. So this should be clear absolutely. إِن كُنَّ يُؤْمِنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If they really believe in Allah and the last day, if they have real belief in Allah and the last day, then they shouldn't hide or conceal whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in their wombs. وَبَعُولَتُهُنَّ أَحَقُّ بِرَدِّهِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ إِنَ رَادُوا إِسْلَاحًا And their husbands have more right and authority to take them back during this period if they want to make things clear and better, if they want reconciliation. During this period, which is called Idda, one person has given one divorce to, to his wife. Now that wife has to wait for three months, three periods. During this time, if the husband has decided to take her back, he can take her back. He has more authorized. The, the wife cannot refuse. He has the authority. He is more powerful. He has the right to take her back, Fizalika, during this period, during this period of their iddah, in Aradu Islaha, if they really desire reconciliation. Now these words have been translated in two ways. Lahunna. For them, yes, that is the women, for the, the women also are rights, just as there are rights over them of the men. You know, this is a very tricky question in this marriage. What are the rights of a woman, wife? What are the rights of husband, the man? Are they absolutely equal? This is the philosophy of the modern civilization. They are all absolutely equal. If the husband can divorce, wife can also divorce. Equal authority of divorcing has been given in this present civilization to men and women. In Islam it's not so. There's a difference. So actually this ayah has been translated, although by many, that the rights of women are absolutely equal to the rights of men. And for them are the rights absolutely like those which are on them for the husbands. The women have, the wives have right over the husband, just like those rights which the husbands have over the wives. This is one way of translating these words. The other is, for the women there are rights which are proportionate to the responsibilities put on them. And this is more scientific, and this is more rationally, logically connected, compatible with the whole family system of Islam. Islam puts certain responsibilities upon the husband, certain responsibilities upon the wife. Now rights always go parallel to the responsibilities. If the responsibilities are more, rights should be more. If the responsibilities are less, rights should also be less. Hence, actually, what, this, what these words mean are, Lahunna, they have the rights, Mislul Nadi Alehinna, which are proportionate to the duties that have been put on their shoulders. I agree with this second translation. Lahunna Mislul Nadi Alehinna bil maruf walil rijale Alehinna daraja. But even if you take the first translation, again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear, and for men, over the women there is a degree of authority. There is one daraja, one degree that the men have over women. Wallahu Azizul Hakim. This thing will be discussed now in detail in Suratul Nisa. Here as I told you the basic directive principles, basic philosophic, philosophical ideas they are being given. And 
the preliminary instructions are being given. But this thing you will develop into a full, full legal system in Surah Al-Nisa and then finally in Surah Al-Ma'idah. At-Talaq o Barratan. Divorce can be twice. Fa'im sa'akum bi ma'rufin aw tasayhum bi ihsan. After that, one has to decide whether to retain the wife with honor or to release her with kindness. After two, if one gives third also, then he cannot take back. That is talaq e mughallas. But up till that time that there are only two divorces, so there is a choice that he can retain the wife. If during the period of iddah, there is no need of another fresh nikah. But if the period of iddah has been completed, now they will have to have a fresh nikah. But they can have it if the divorces are only two up till now. If it is the third one, then the, they, they, they cannot marry again. It will come later on, inshallah. At-talaqo barratane fa imsaakum me marufin o tasrihum be ihsan. Divorce is twice. After that, either a retention with honor or a release with honor. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُمْ أَنْ تَعْخُذُوا مِمْ وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَعْخُذُوا مِمْ مَا عَتَيْتُ مُوهُنْ نَشَيًّا And it is not permissible for you that you take back from them what you have given them. What maher and what dowry has been given, you cannot take on divorce. You cannot get it back. إِلَّا أَنْ يَخَافَ أَنْ لَا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ Except if they think and if they fear that they cannot maintain the limits of the law of the Sharia. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ If they fear, they cannot maintain the, the limits of the law of Allah. فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا There is no sin, there will be no sin on both of them. فِي مَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ Wherewith she gets her freedom. If she says, actually, if she says, I am ready to forego half of my mahar, you release me. This is called khula. The woman, the wife can get khula. If she cannot give talaq. She can get khula. And in khula, she might have to forego half of the mahar. Maybe the husband says no. She might have to forego full her mahar. But there, in that case, the, person, the husband, he doesn't want to, to give divorce. It's the wife who is demanding divorce. In that case, the husband has the authority to demand that my mahar that I paid to you should be returned either in total or in half. تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا These are the limits prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't transgress them. Here just remember, we, we found the words, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَقْرَبُوهَا While we were discussing, you know, the ayat of the 23rd section regarding song, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَقْرَبُوهَا I told at that time that at certain places the wordings are تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا these are the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed by Him. So don't transgress them. وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ And whosoever transgresses the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ So verily they are the evil doers. فَإِن تَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِهَا زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ And now if he divorces her for the third time اَتَّلَاقُ بَرَّتَان That was the previous ayah. Now, if for the third time he has also divorced, فَإِن تَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ Now she will not be permissible in marriage. She will not be lawful for him. فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْد After this, حَتَّى تَنْكِهَا زَوْجًا غَيْرَا Till such time that she marries another husband. فَإِن تَلَّقَهَا And now if the other husband, now if he also gives divorce, فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا Now there will be no sin if they compromise again. فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا يَتَرَاجَعَا If those two again get into the marriage contract. إِن ظَنَّا أَنْ يُقِيمَا حُدُودَ اللَّهِ If they think that now they can maintain the limits of the Islam of the Sharia. وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ يُبَيِّنُهَا لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ And these are the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is making them very clear for those people who know. وَإِذَا تَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَا عَجَلَهُنَّ فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ سَرِّحُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ And if you have divorces your women, your wives, and they have completed the period of iddah, three periods, three menstrual periods, 
Now from Sekuhunna, now is the time to decide. If it is not the third divorce, it is the first or the second divorce. It is the time finally to decide. From Sekuhunna be maruf, either retain them in a, in a noble way, or Sarvehuhunna be maruf, or let them go and let them release them with kindness. Walatum Sekuhunna ziraran letatadu. And don't retain them in order to do harm to them. If you are angry, well, I don't let her go. I'll punish. Because if she goes away, then you can't punish her anymore. If you want to retain her only to do harm to her, whosoever does this, he has done wrong to himself. Because Allah Ta'ala will punish him then. And don't make Allah's revelations a mockery. Don't play with the with the laws of the Sharia because I have the authority to take her back. So I have taken back legally. Yes, legally you have done good. But if your intentions are to do harm to her, then actually you will be rewarded and you will be punished on the day of judgment. Remember Allah's blessing over you. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to you the book. Well, hikmah and the wisdom, ya'izukum bihi. And he is admonishing you with this. But taqullaha wa'alamu and Allah bi kulli shayin alim. And have regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear him and keep it in mind that he knows everything. Fa'in wa'idha talaqtumun nisafa balagna ajalahunna. And when you have divorced your women, and they have reached their, they have completed their period of, of iddah. فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِهْنَا الْوَاجَهُنَّ So don't stop them from marrying their own husbands. Now for example, if somebody has divorced your daughter, and now because it is the only first or the second divorce, and now the husband, you know, he wants to take her back, you say, no. So this has also been, you know, the Muslims have been not permitted to do it. You don't come in the way. If the husband wants to take her back, if the wife is also ready to take to go back to that husband, then don't come in their way. Because out of your pride and haughtiness, why did he divorce? And you know, this is this is not permissible. Falata Dulu Hunna. If they can agree among themselves, if they are ready to remarry, I told you after the completion of the Iddah, there should be a fresh marriage. Within the period of Iddah, the husband can take without a fresh marriage. But after that, that period has been completed, now there has to be a fresh marriage. But now if the parents or the brothers or the relatives of the woman, they come in the way, we won't allow this marriage, this is wrong. These advices are being given to those of you who really believe in Allah and the last day. Because if you don't believe, then all these advices are useless. You won't pay heed to them. Only those of you will be able to avail of all these advices and admonitions who have real faith in Allah and the, and the last day. Zalikum aska lakum wathar. This is more decent for you or, and more pure for you. Wallahu yalamu antum la ta'alamun. Allah knows and you don't know. Wal walidatu yurzayna awladahunna hawlayni kamilayn. And mothers should suckle their offsprings for two complete years. Liman arada yutimmar raza'a. For whom wants to complete that suckling? And on the father is the responsibility, to provide for their feeding and their clothing in the proper way. If you have divorced the wife, but there is a child who is suckling, you can say to your divorced wife, you have to keep, keep this child with you and, and suckle your you know, milk. And I will provide you with your feeding and your clothing. The father is responsible. لا تكلف النفس إلا بسعها. No one is burdened save according to his capacity. 
لاتدار والد تم بے والا دیہا نو مدر شوڈ بی ہارم ڈیو ٹو ہر ہر آف اسپرنگ ولا مولود الہو بے والا دیہی ان دی سیم وے نو فادر شوڈ بی ہارم ڈیو ٹو ہز آف اسپرنگ وار الوار اس بھی سلو ہو اینڈ دی ریسپانسبلٹی آف اے پرسن ول بی ٹرانسمیٹڈ ٹو ہز ہیئر آلسو ذالک فائن ارادا فی سالن اف دی ٹو دی پیرنٹس دی ڈیسائڈ that the the this you know the weaning of the child that that mother will not suckle her him or her wa in arada fisalan an tarazi minhuma wa tashawurin by mutual consultation they decide fala junaha alayhima then also there is no sin on on both of them wa in aradtu mustatarzu if you want to have foster suckling auladakum for your for your sons and daughters fala junaha alaykum iza sallamtu ma ataytum bil ma'ruf there is no sin on you you can do it it is also permissible to have foster suckling from some other woman but when you have given to the real mother what you had decided to give it wattaqullaha wa alamu anna allaha bima ta'maluna basir and have regard of allah fear allah and keep it in mind that whatever you are doing allah is seeing it walladhina yatawaffawna minkum wa yadruna azwaja yatarabbasna bi anfusihinna arba'ata ashhurin wa ashra Now this was the this was the rules regarding the wives who were divorced. Now about the widowed women, what should happen to them? When the dinner you do a phone a minute, and those of you who die, by the rule as wajan, and they have left behind them wives. Let the rabbasna be anfusihinna arbaat ashurin washra. those widowed wives should withhold themselves for 4 months and 10 days faiza balagna ajalahunna and when they have completed this period fala junaha alaykum fi ma falna fi antusihinna then now it is no responsibility of yours about what they do about their own selves bil maruf but it should be in a reasonable way known methods of the society wallahu bima ta'maluna khabir and whatsoever you are doing allah knows them wala junaha alaykum fi ma arrastum bihi min khidmatin nisa and there is no blame on you in that you speak in directly of your proposal of marriage to the widows aw aqlantum fi anfusikum or you conceal it in your hearts wallah alam allah annakum satazkuruna hunna allah taala knows that you will have is their idea will come to your mind such and such woman has been widowed or such and such woman has been divorced now if you like her you can have some idea in your mind that i want to marry her now walakin la tuwaidu hunna sirran but don't make any agreement any hidden any secret agreement of marriage till that time that the idda is completed within this period you can have some ideas and you can mention it also in a beautiful way in an indirect way but there can be not a, a full agreement of marriage before the ending of that period wala wala ki la tuwaidu hunna sirran illa an taqulu qawlan ma'rufa you can say something which is proper which can only hint that i intend to marry you wala ta'zimu ghadatan nikah and resolve not don't resolve the marriage tie hatta yamlug al kitab wa jalla before that time that the period is completed the law is completed wa alamu anna allah ya'lamu ma fi anfusikum and know yourself you should know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in your hearts ka zaruho so we we fearing him you should always be mindful that allah knows even those things which are in my heart he knows my intentions also wa'lamu anna allah ghafurur rahim and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know it and keep it in mind that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is forgiving and forbearing la junaha alaykum in talaqtum an-nisa ma lam tamassuhunna aw tafriduhunna lahu tafridu lahunna faridah there is no not no blame on you if you divorce your wives whom you have not as yet touched or you have not fixed for them any bridal money marriage has been consummated 
but neither they have met together the husband has not touched the wife up till now no marriage money no bridal money has been fixed no mehar has been decided and the the person the husband is divorcing the wife it can be done babat ke hunna but give something in gift to them when you are divorcing although the mehar was not settled the bridal money was not settled not decided but if you have divorced her give something alal muse qadaruhu wa alal mukhtari qadaruhu on the rich is according to his capacity on the poor person according to his capacity they should pay something and give some gifts mataam bil maaruf and this should be a fair provision haqqan alal muhsirin and this is an obligation on the good doers wa in talaqtumuhunna min qabl an tamassuhunna wa qad farastum lahunna fariza now this is another situation if you want to divorce a wife whom you have not touched up till now but the bridal money had been settled now what to do for this for ma farastum so now you will have to pay half of what you had decided and settled illa yafuna except if they they give you something if they forego something if they say no i don't want anything or aw yafu allazi bi yadihi uqdatun nikah or that person foregoes in whose hands is the tie of the marriage and that what does it mean the husband the tie of the marriage is in the hand of the husband he can give divorce whenever he like the woman the wife cannot give divorce whenever she likes so the tie the knot of nikah is in the hand of the husband so actually it is half that is that has to be given but even the wife can say i don't want to take this half or even husband can say no i want to give full wan tafu if you forgo that is you don't give half but give full aqrabu lit taqwa this is nearer to taqwa wala tansabul fazla baidakum do not ignore the superiority between you you are superior allah subhanahu wa taala has given you the upper hand so you should be generous and you should give her not half but the full dowry inna allah bima ta'maluna basir whatever you are doing allah taala is seeing it hafizu ala salawat wa salat al wusta guard all of your prayers and especially the mid prayer the middest prayer and there is nearly consensus among the mufassirin that this is salatul asr wa qumu lillah qaliteen and keep standing before allah subhanahu wa taala in a very humble way with humility fain khiftum and if you are in fear for example if you are going somewhere and you are fearing that enemy is pursuing you and you want to be safe fain khiftum farijalan aur rukbanan then you can offer your prayers even walking or riding if there is no time that you can get down and then you can say the prayer in the usual manner then when you are walking walking you can say your prayer if you are riding on camels or horses you can say your prayers on that but if if there is danger if there is khauf this is called salatul khauf fa in khiftum fa rijalan aur rukbanan fa iza amintum fazkurullah kama allamakum ma lam takunu ta'lamun when you are in peace and security now you remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has taught you ma'lam takunu ta'lamun which you didn't know before now how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given the details of the salah the prayer in the quran so this teaching of salah that came to us through the practice of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taught by jibril alaihi salatu wassalam so actually this this method of salah has been taught to us through firstly jibril and then muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is why the prophet has said sallu kama raaytu muni usalli you should pray just as you see me praying so we have to copy there can be differences regarding the traditions but you know one thing should be agreed upon by each muslim if he is a real mu'min we have to pray just as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray but now regarding the sunnah whether this is proved or not 
whether this, this hadith is more strong and this hadith is less strong, that is actually for the jurists and the fuqaha and the people who are knowledgeable about hadith and sunnah, they will decide. But the, the argument would come from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا وَفَّرْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا وَسِيَّةً لِأَزْوَاجِهِمْ مَتَعَالِ لَلْحَوْلِ غَيْرَ إِخْرَاجِ And those of you who die, and they leave behind them wives, they should leave a bequest in favor of their wives, that for one year they should be provided. You know, actually we people can't appreciate these problems. Usually, we people belonging to Indo-Pakistan subcontinent especially, we have only one mother. Usually people bury only one wife. So the mother, you know, for the, the heirs, you know, she is the mother, not the wife of the father only. She is their own mother. So the feelings are different. But perhaps one person has ten wives that used to be there in the days of Jijahiliya. Even in Islam there could be four wives. Now one is the mother, the rest of the three are only the wives of your father. So for them, you know, there should have been a bequest. There should have been something decided by the, the person who has died. That for them, there should be a bequest. At least for one year they should be provided for food, for their clothing, and they shouldn't be turned out of the houses of the deceased person for at least one year. فَإِنْ خَلَجِنَا فَلَا جُنَاهَا عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُتِهِنَّا But if they themselves go out, if they decide to marry, for example, have a, a new marriage, then it's none of your business to obstruct their way. فَإِنْ خَلَجِنَا فَلَا جُنَاهَا عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُتِهِنَّا Whatever they want to do for themselves, you have no, no business to stop them. مِنْ مَعْرُوفِ Although this should be in the known way, in the, according to the fair manner of the society. Wallahu Azizul Hakim, Allah is Almighty, He is all wise. Walil mutallaqat mataun bil maruf haqqan al muttaqim. In the same way, this was the discussion about the widows. Walladina yutawafauna. Walil mutallaqat mataun bil maruf. In the same way, for the divorced women also, there should be some provision. And this is a duty on muttaqim, people who are muttaqim, who are God fearing. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ In this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his ayat clear, his signs clear, so that you can understand, you can follow them in detail and in depth, and so that you can follow them in letter as well as in spirit. This is a lengthy discussion, and most of these issues, because they are not very relevant for us, usually, these things are actually abnormal in this society, but you know, these are very important things to note it. Four sections, full four sections, are devoted to these problems. The most important point that you should infer is that in Islamic social system, maximum emphasis has been put on this social family life, the relationship between wife and husband. The main idea is that this family life should be strong. The institution of family should be strong. And because the institution family should be strong, there should be some one, one person at the head, at the top. One should be the head of the family, and there cannot be both. Both wife and husband can't be, can't be equal. There must be some inequality. You must have one at the top. You know, you can have a managing director, and you can have 20 directors, but you can't have two managing directors. There can be one chairman. But there can be so many deputy chairmen, or and the, uh, there can, can only be one president. You can have so many deputy presidents, vice presidents. So in the institution of family, the husband has been given the upper hand. He can divorce. The wife cannot divorce. Wife can get divorce from the husband, and it is called khola. And she has to forego certain part of her dowry money, dower, the bridal money that was paid to her. Some part she, she will have to forego if she wants to get khula from the husband. So this is definitely unequal. Actually, as men, as human beings, men and women are absolutely equal. No difference between them. But when they are 
wife and husband, they are unequal. Now husband has the upper hand. وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةً For men, they have, there is a superiority, a degree of superiority over them. And this will be discussed, as I told you, in Surah Al-Nisa. الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَا That is, that will come more clear and more obvious there in Surah Al-Nisa, inshaAllah. أَلَمْ تَرَا إِذَا الَّذِينَ خَرَجُوا مِنْ دِعَارِهِمْ وَهُمْ أُلُوفٌ حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ فَقَالَ لَهُمُ اللَّهُ مُوتُوا ثُمَّ أَحْيَاهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ أَلَمْ تَرَا literally means didn't you see but these wordings are repeated in the Quran but they mean different differently at different places don't you think about those things have you never thought about it have you never considered the case أَلَمْ تَرَا Alam tara ilal lazina. Have you never considered the case of those people, kharaju min de arehim, who came out from their houses, wa hum uluf, and they were in thousands, hazar al maut, fearing death. Fakala hum Allah mutu. Allah said to them, die. Summa hiyahum. Then he revived them. Then he again brought them to life. إن الله لذو فضل على الناس ولكن أكثر الناس لا يشكرون. Verily Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is bountiful to mankind, but most of the people they are not grateful, they are not thankful. Now actually from here for two sections we are going to have an incident we should say or a part, a chunk of the history of the Bani Israel. Why? Actually now. When this Surah Al-Baqarah was being revealed, time was nearing for the battle of Badr. There was going to be, as I told you, this Surah was revealed just after Hijrah, but before the battle of Badr. During these nearly 16-17 months, this Surah was revealed bit by bit. Now, you know, we are nearing the end of the Surah. And in the same way, you must imagine that the time of the battle of Badr was coming near, nearer and nearer. In the history of the previous Muslim Ummah, there was a parallel battle which was fought between Talut and Jalut. Although this battle of Badr in Islam, it was during the lifetime of the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa The case with the former Muslim Ummah was different. During the lifetime of Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam, there was no victory, no state was established, deen was not established. But after his death, the, the Jews, the Bani Israel, they could conquer Palestine. But as I told you, they didn't establish one state, one government. They divided the whole country into twelve states, small states. And they kept, you know, fighting with each other. For 300 years this was the state of affairs. Then came an event that their enemies, you know, they overpowered them because of their differences. They exploited their differences and as a result they were turned out. Many of them were turned out from their homes. And then they requested the prophet of that time, Hazrat Samuel alayhi salatu wasalam, you appoint for us a king, a military leader so that we join our forces together, the twelve tribes, under one banner, under one king, under one military leader, under one commander, and so that we can fight our enemies. Then there happened that battle of Talut and Jalut, and with that battle actually started their period of, the, 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 which we call the golden period of the Jewish history, that is the days of Talut alayhi salam, and then Dawood alayhi salam, and then Suleiman alayhi salam, they go to make nearly 100 years. And that is the golden history, golden period of the total history of the Jews of Bani Israel. Now that battle of Talut and Jalut is going to be discussed. But before discussing that battle, this incident is given, and about this you know there is no detail available in any Sahih Hadith. What does this ayah mean? Maybe it was some miracle, just as the miracles were there. About the Bani Israel, we have been reading the miracles throughout the surah. They were killed and then they were re revived. And then, you know, they were put to death and then again they were revived. These things have been happening. So maybe it happened sometimes in the history of Bani Israel. 
and but we can't say what was that event, when it happened, what were the details, they are not available. Maybe that some of them, they fled from their homes in fear of death. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them to death. Then revived them to show them that life and death is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't get life and you can't preserve life from by fleeing from death. You must face death. You must face the, the, the enemy in the battlefield. Don't f flee away. Don't run away because you can die. There also while you are running away f from battlefield, you can die. So that might be the case. But one of the Mufassirin, maybe the others also, the modern Mufassirin, has given a rational explanation of this event also. And he says, and he is Maulana Maududi, Rahimahullah, he says that this incident is referring to that event of their history. Well, you know, after Exodus, Bani Israel were required to fight against the Canaanites and conquer Palestine. And Moses salatu was himself leading them till that time. But the whole of the nation refused to, to go to war against the Canaanites. That event also will come in detail in Surah al -Mahida. So to that actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in allegorical terms he is referring to this, this matter in these words because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a punishment. إِنَّهُمْ يَتِيهُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً إِنَّهَا مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً يَتِيهُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Have they not shown this cowardice that they have refused to go to war against the enemies of Allah? They would have been given the the control of this country at this very moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have given them this country at this very moment. But because of their cowardice, their refusal to go to war, now this land has been made forbidden for them in Naha Muharramatun alayhim al sana for 40 years. They will go on, keep on wandering in this desert for 40 years. During those 40 years, all the people, all the Bani Israel who had come from Egypt, who were born and raised up, in slavery, they died. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam also died. Hazrat Harun alayhi salam also died. All that generation died. And now a new generation, which was born in this desert, in free atmosphere, this generation came up. And then they fought against the enemies. And then they conquered and entered Palestine. So that may be allegorically, these were the new Mutu, that is, the old generation died. Sumahyahum, as if that nation was revived through a new generation that was born and brought up in the desert in free atmosphere. This is the explanation that Barana Madhudi has given. And I tend to agree with him, although you know, because you know, this is something it doesn't fit wholly in the words of the ayah. But I think this is the nearest explanation that at least I have known up till this date. Wallahu alam. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ خَرَجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَهُمْ أُلُوفُ الْحَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ فَقَالَ لَهُمُ اللَّهُ مُوتُوا Didn't you see, didn't you think about the event of those people who came out of their houses fearing death? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, die. So Mahyahum, then he revived them, brought them again to life. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَلَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely bountiful to the people, but most of the people are not grateful. Because now battle of Badr is nearing, again you know the injunction. Now you go to war for the cause of Allah, in the way of Allah. Don't shirk going to war. And keep it in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to everything and he knows everything. Who is that who gives loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A goodly loan. What is a goodly loan? What is Qarz Hasana? Qarz Hasana one gives selflessly. He doesn't want to get, want to get any to get any benefit out of it. He only wants to Fulfill the requirement and need of his brother. This is Qarzi Hasana. I am giving you this money. You will return you, to me this money when you can, when it is easy for you. And you just fulfill your requirements and your needs for the time being. This is Qarzi Hasana. 
In the same way, if you give Allah loan, and to give Allah loan, what does it mean? To spend for his deen, not for your own self. You are spending money for the deen of Allah, to make it supreme, to establish it, to propagate the message of Allah, to, pro to propagate the, the knowledge and wisdom of Quran. You are spending your money. So this is actually giving Allah tarzi hasana. And for, you know, providing for the Muslim armies to fight against the enemies of Allah, for the purchase of arms, and, for, and, and you know, the rations, etc., etc. All these things are required to go to war. So to, to fulfill these requirements, if you are spending, you are actually giving loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man zalladhi yuqlidu allaha qarran hasanan. Who is that? Who has the courage? Who is so much believing? Who has the conviction in Allah and hereafter? To that extent that he gives away his money in loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu yaqbizu wa yabsut. And it is Allah who decreases or increases the food or the wealth of a person. Don't fear that if you give, give your money away for the cause of Allah, your wealth will be decreased. No. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases in your wealth due to this expenditure that you have incurred in the way of Allah. Wallahu yaqbizu wa yabsut. It is his authority. He does it. It is his ex exclusive job. He does it. Either he increases or decreases. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And you will be returned to him finally. أَلَمْ تَرَا إِلَى الْمَلَيْ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Now this is this, the, the narration is of that battle between Jalut and Talut. Again note please that it happened about 300 years after Moses. عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ If not after his death, at least 300 years after Exodus. After they came from, out from Egypt and they came to Sinai Peninsula. 300 years after that, this incident happened. Alam tara ilal malay min bani Israel, and that was the condition, as I told you, when you know the small states of, of the Israelites, of these tribes of Israel, they were, you know, endangered, they were, some of them were captured by their enemies, many of them were turned out from their houses and their lands, and they were in a very bad condition, very bad shape. After all, they said to the Nabi, to the Prophet of the time, that now you please nominate for us one military leader, one king, so that we join our forces under one banner, and then, you know, with strength we can fight our enemies. Alam al malay min bani Israel min ba'de Musa. Did you never think about the chiefs, chiefs of the tribes of bani Israel? Malay min bani Israel. Min ba'de Musa, after Moses. Is qalu le nabi lahum. When they said to the Prophet, their Prophet, and he was Samuel alayhi salatu wasalam. Samuel, you can find the book of Samuel in the Old Testament. Now you nominate for us a king, and by that king, what is meant is the military leader, a commander. So that we can go to war for the cause of Allah. The Nabi said, the Prophet said, Samuel alayhi salatu wasalam said, Is there any possibility that if the going to war is fighting is prescribed and made obligatory, then you refuse to fight? Is it also possible? You are very eager to go to fight, but when your fighting comes, it's a different affair. Just as you refused to Moses alayhi salatu wasalam, your own, you know, forefathers, they refused to go to war. Is there any possibility that history may repeat? But what was the answer? They said, what is to what to us? What's the reason that we do not go to fight for the cause of Allah? And we have been turned away from our houses and our sons. You know, maybe some of the sons of these people, they were taken captive and slaves. When fighting was prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet, most of them turned their backs, except only a few. And Allah very well knows these evildoers. And their Nabi, their Prophet, Hazrat Samuel alayhi salam said to them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعَثَ لَكُمْ تَعْلُوتَ مَلِكَةً 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised for you and decided for you Talut. The name in Bible is Saul. Saul, Talut. And Talut, Quran gives this name because he was very tall. Tall, tall, tall in Arabic. Tool in Arabic, length. Tool is uh, length. He was a very tall person. Talut, a very tall person. So maybe his real name was Saul, but this adjective, a quality name, a sifati naam, that has been given by Quran and that is Talut. Qad baasa lakum Talut amalika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has nominated for you Talut as king. Qalu anna yakunu lahu mulk. Alayna. They said, where from can he has the kingdom over us? Can, how can he become king over us? Wa nahnu ahakko bil mulk minho. We are more rightful. We have more right to be king. Walam yu tasata min al mal. He has not been given, you know, any wealth. He has not been given abundance in wealth. Qala inna Allah has tafahu alaykum. The Nabi, the Prophet, Hazrat Samuel alayhi salam said, It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has chosen him from you, out of you. It is his choice. Wazadahu basfatan fil ilmi wal jism. And he has given him abundance in knowledge as well as body. Physical power is abundant with him in his body. He was a very strong person bodily. And number two, ilm and, and understanding. These two things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him in abundance. If he has not been given abundant wealth, he has been given the abundant uh, physical qualities and knowledge. Wallahu yuti mulkahu man yasha. And Allah gives his kingdom to whomsoever he pleases. Wallahu wasi'ul alim. And Allah is all embracing, all knowing. Wa qala lahum nabiyyuhum inna ayata mulkihi an yati yakumut tabut. And said to them their prophet. That is, Hazrat Samuel alayhi salam also said to them that the sign in the ayat abu kehi, the sign of his kingship is ayatiya kumut tabut, that the wooden box, the ark, the ark, you know, that is very famous these days. It's, it's come in news. They say that ark, you know, that sacred ark is, is embedded in, in the foundations of Masjid Aqsa that is present up till now. It's a wooden box in which those, those stones, you know, tablets of stone on which Torah is written, which was given to Moses alayhi salatu was salam on the Mount of Tur, they are there in that box. Then the staff of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the Asha that is present there, some other more, you know, sacred things in the history of, uh, of Bani Israel, they are in that, that is Tabut al-Sakina that is called. So that actually that was the most sacred thing as sacred to them as is Kaaba for us, that Tabut al-Sakina was so sacred for Bani Israel. They always kept it with them, that box. And wherever they went, there was, you know, a, a chariot was reserved for that box, for that ark. And that ark had been taken away by their enemies. Now they were very much disappointed, because the most sacred thing of theirs was taken away from them. And Samuel alayhi salam said, that the sign of the kingship of Talut will be that that ark will come to you again in a miraculous way. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ آيَةَ مُلْكِهِ يَنْيَاتِ يَكُمُ التَّابُوتُ فِيهِ سَكِينَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ In that, that taboot, in that box, in that ark, is peace and tranquility for you from your Lord. وَبَقِيَّةٌ مِّمَّا تَرَكَ عَالُ مُوسَى وَعَالُ هَارُونَ And in that box are the remnants of what was left from by the family of Moses and the family of Arun, alayhi salatu was salam, tahmiluhul malayika, that has been carried now by the, by the angels. In the fizalika la ayat allakum in kuntu mu'mineen. And in this is a sign for you if you really believe. And it so happened, as the Prophet has said, that one day they found that a chariot is coming, some bullocks or you, there's no driver, and on that, you know, chariot, there was the, that ark was placed and that came to them. They now believed and they now thought that actually now Talut is our king and he has been nominated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sign that was told to us by our prophet that has been fulfilled. Now in the next section, inshallah, we shall have the detail of that war which happened between, which was utter, which occurred 
between which was held between Jalut, whose name is Goliath, or generally the Goliath or Goliath, and Talut, that is Saul alayhi salatu was salam. In between them, the war was fought, and from that war or, or battle started the golden history of the former Muslim ummah, that is Bani Israel. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Azim wa nafani wa yaqum bil ayat wa zikr al Hakim. Allahu Akbar. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.